Hey, thanks for checking out the Comfy Blog. Today I'm here with Marjorie Brook, and she's going to be talking to us today about fascia and what is fascia, and what part it plays in uh, in our body, and dysfunctions in our body, and basically how we're how we're how we're made here. So, Marjorie, thanks for being on the uh, on the Comfy Couch interview section here today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Greg. I'm glad to be here. Uh, Marjorie actually was also my teacher in active isolated stretching, which is something that we'll touch on and maybe even do a, a whole whole video on in the future, and in scar tissue release. Uh, again, another thing we might cover in another video. But uh, both involve fascia, so tell us, Marjorie, what is fascia? Okay, fascia is the interconnected tissue throughout our whole body. The best way to explain fascia, because when most people think about skin or tissue, they think only about their surface area, what they can see, okay? What's start right at the beginning and give you a really good visualization. Picture a giant roll of saran wrap, okay? One long, continuous piece of uh, material. Start down at your toes and wrap all the way up, inside, outside, each and every direction, around the bones, around the muscles, part of the muscles, all the way down. Up one leg, down the other, all the way up, in backwards, forwards, front to back, up your center, all the way up through your head and out your arms. One solid piece. Okay, so because it's all connected, um, no matter what you do, if you, if you have an issue down on your ankle, it's going to affect the rest of your body, possibly all the way up to your shoulder, because it's all one piece. Okay, so, and again, it wraps around everything, from the smallest fiber in a muscle, all the way out to the muscle, open, in fact, muscles are actually considered fascia, um, all the way out to the bone, um, and even creates that little sac and protective uh, bag around our organs so that our organs can move freely. All also one piece, all attached. So it's very, very, very important to understand that. Um, the other very big issue about fascia that most people don't understand is that fascia is also a communications network throughout our body. When you ask anyone uh, what is the communication system throughout your body and everyone's going to say the nerve. Right. And it is, but uh, current research has shown that also the fascia, our tissues, conduct electrical messages to the muscles. In fact, that is what is actually causing the muscles to contract is the contraction on the fascia. That's an extraordinarily important piece of information, but even more so is that they've documented and proven that the fascia is also an emotional network, that it transmits our emotions. So how does that, you'll say, oh, what's the big deal about that? Well, that kind of goes along with the line to say someone who's suffering from fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia, which was up until recently considered just, you know, people who claim that they had fibromyalgia were just nut jobs because they had phantom pain and limited restriction in motion, and the doctors had no idea what was going on. Well, what's going on, in my opinion, is that the person has an emotional or mental or some sort of issue that they're not currently dealing with and it's manifesting itself through the fascia into the body trying to force that person to pay attention to what's going on. We just have to understand that that's most likely where it's coming from. Another important along that line or fact that we have to understand is that as, a, as practitioners and therapists are looking at it and even on the individual person's basis, that um, if someone's having an emotional issue that's causing a physical problem, there can also be a relation in that someone can have a physical problem that's eliciting emotional responses, which will inhibit our ability to help cure the physical problem. For example, if you have someone suffering from a, a disease such as MS or Parkinson's, their utter frustration or maybe depression or anger or resentment or whatever emotion is running through is blocking the ability to help treat the body and causing the symptoms to work. If you have, go the other way. If you have an athlete who's injured, who is afraid they're going to lose their scholarship or be sent down to the minor leagues or is angry and frustrated because they're losing time on the field or on the track, that is being manifested and in inhibiting the ability to recover as well. So from that point of view, the fascia is extraordinarily important. It sounds like almost like a missing link between um, emotional and physical sort of traumas. It sounds like the way you're describing it almost. 
It is. It's the mind-body connection right there. Okay. Um, ther- massage therapists like to say the issues in the tissue. Uh, the little coin phrase that's very popular on the massage therapist. But it's actually very, very true. We don't, as, as a race, we do not do anything just for the sake of just we just decide to do something. Everything comes from an emotional uh, point of view. We're doing something because we want to do it, we don't, or we're doing something because we don't like to do it, or we, you know, we're eating more. Do everything is coming from an emotional state of needs and wants. And if those are being manifested physically throughout our body, that has to be paid attention to. From a therapist's point of view, if you're working with somebody and you're not paying attention to what's going on, even if they're having a day where, say, the boss drove them crazy or the husband at that point is driving the wife up the wall and they're coming in angry, frustrated, all over the place, if you don't pay attention to that, that's gonna, that might be the issue that needs to be dealt with on top of everything else. They might have a bad back, a bad neck, a disorder, or a disease, but that's the primary issue that's showing and you need to deal with that first. Sure, and I have, I have in my practice, I've had or have regulars who, you know, part of the massage is, is an emotional release where they'll tend to cry every session, something like that, and, um, but that's a very necessary part of the session for them. Um, so, in fact, I've had people who, um, when, when checking me out as a new massage therapist, since they've maybe moved to Connecticut's where I am from someplace else, they'll they'll kind of double check with me that that's okay first because they know that that's part of, for them, what they're going to get out of the sessions. One of the main issues with, um, with treating and recognizing the foster as a therapist too is like you saying they were checking with you that it's okay that they cross. And like right. that, that's an issue in and of itself. They shouldn't need to check in with anyone else. Is it okay if I have an emotional experience or outburst? You know, this is part of us as a society that we repress or this proper behavior that we should have. And we right. swallow and keep all that in. Again, this is like just see how these things branch off just from paying attention to the issues that come out when we touch. When someone's hurting or upset, the first thing we all think that we do is touch them. That touch is a comfort and a support. Yeah. You know, if they're having an emotional problem and that physical contact of just touching, say, a shoulder or a holding a hand gives them the support they need, it's being transmitted through that touch. Right. That's why it's extraordinarily important on the emotional basis to understand that. Um, I personally believe it's 80% of all therapy is to take a step back and understand who you're dealing with, not just the body and the issue and the pain, but where it's coming from. I mean, fear is a huge factor when treating someone. I had a client who um, had a shoulder replacement and he happened to be a, a bit of a warrior. And he was afraid, because no one explained to him, that a shoulder replacement cannot dislocate the same as a hip. So for years, he self-limited the use of his arm out of fear of dislocating it. And the more he self-limited it, the more issues appeared in the rest of his body. By the time he came to me, his neck was locked up and he couldn't move it. And he totally did not associate that with the fact that he wasn't using the arm, which was now half atrophied, and the other arm was over tight and overused. So it set up this cascading compensatory effect throughout his whole body simply because of his fear. Right. It was transmitted into everything that he did, and that was transmitted through the fascia. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. I, had, uh, I had a question, too, about something you said earlier when you were describing fascia, and maybe for, for viewers, just to clarify, um, we have muscles through our body, but they... So the difference between sort of muscle, muscles and, and fascia, it sounds like... You know, muscles, there's a muscle here and a muscle here, and you know, but Fasha, the, the way you described it as interconnected, I wonder if you could just clarify that, sure. that difference. Um, the best way I can describe that, let me go and explain um, about biotensegrity. Sure. Biotensegrity is a new term that's so become hot topic, and it's really amazing. It's basically, it's a geometric term about how uh, uh, push-pull or pressure and vector tension uh, all work upon each other. The best way I can express, let me give you a little example. Let's picture a suspension bridge. 